I'm super excited to be chatting with you guys today. As you all know, we are going to be sharing some practical tips and best practices for giving Tuesday success. And if you are ready, I want to see in the chat, I am ready for this great session because I know I'm ready. Are y'all ready? Make sure you let me know. While I'm waiting to hear from the get from you guys in the chat, I want to let you know we're going to go through some welcome and introductions. We're going to talk a little bit about Give Butter and Giving Tuesday and all the things that Give Butter is doing this year for Giving Tuesday. And then we're going to jump into all the great details. Okay. We are going to go and do an in depth campaign workshop with um, some with three amazing organizations. And then we're going to turn it over for some Q&A. You get to ask these amazing organizational leaders some questions for yourself to get you guys ready for Giving Tuesday. And then we're going to close out with a preview of our next webinar. But before we jump right in, I want to go through some housekeeping rules, OK? So as always, please use the Q&A feature to ask questions. I know my Give Better fam, okay? Y'all just like me, y'all got something to say and I love that, okay? But make sure you use the Q&A, okay? It's a little bit too much in the chat for us to be able to read and see, so make sure you use the Q&A if you have specific questions and we will get through those, okay? I want you to comment and use emojis. You, if you've been to any of the webinars where I'm leading, you know I like to talk to you and I like you to talk back to me, okay? We're in this together, okay, Give Better fam? We're in this together. So use that chat, use emojis, and let me know what is up, okay? Keep the chat kind and respectful. Of course, we are one Give Better community. Um, we have Holly and Grace here from our team, actually. They're going to be answering questions throughout the session and dropping some amazing gems throughout. And then if you are already in the Give Better fam, I want you to comment, I'm in. And that's specifically important this year because this year on Giving Tuesday, we are going to be using that Give Better fam. We're going to be chatting and communicating all day long. So if you're in the Give Better fam, please let me know I'm in and put that down there in the chat. So without further ado, I want to introduce myself. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, my name is Floyd Jones. I'm the Success and Partnerships Manager here at Give Butter. I'm calling straight from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I had the privilege of working with small organizations all my life. I've been able to work with them, grow with them, um, and, and, and see them grow through fundraising. Um, and I also have been a student, so that's also a fun fact. Um, but without further ado, I also want to invite my co-host to the stage, Kate Cogswell. Kate, can you introduce yourself today? Hey, everybody. Kate Cogswell here. I am the success teammate here at Give Butter. And I have a soft spot for longstanding organizations who are trying to engage a younger donor bait. In the past 10 years, I've lived on both coast and in the Midwest, four states in total, as currently in Syracuse, New York. And I am super excited to chat with you all today about Giving Tuesday. So we are going to bring up our first poll. And that should be coming up for you here in just a moment. How many days do you think it is until Giving Tuesday? What is the count? All right, our options are not enough days, 25, 27, or 28. Whose mental math is gonna, is gonna win here? Okay, that next question I said, how confident are you that you're gonna reach your Giving Tuesday fundraising goal? If you're like some people to be what goal, you're not super confident, you're somewhat confident, you're very confident, or you know you're going to surpass that Giving Tuesday goal. So I'll ask it again. How confident are you that you'll reach your Giving Tuesday fundraising goal? Let me know. Let me know where y'all are at. Okay, Amanda says they're 95% confident. Okay, Okay, let's see. Let's see what the answer is. Let's see how confident people are. Oh, okay. We have a nice little mix. We have some people who are in that not super confident and some people who are in that somewhat confident. And I want to tell you guys right now before we go on, that is okay. We here at Give Butter are here for you. And I promise you, we are going to not just going to start together, but we're going to rise together. We're going to climb together. And we're going to make sure that hopefully by the end of today's session, a few more of you switch up in that line. Okay. So before we go on, 
I hear we're having some audio issues. Okay, can you guys hear me still? Okay, so we're gonna keep on going. But before we go on, I really wanna share a little bit more about what Give Butter is doing this year for Giving Tuesday. So I wanna jump to our Giving Tuesday website and share with you guys a little bit more. So um, this year for Giving Tuesday, Give Butter has so many different unique features that are coming on their way. And for those of you guys who didn't know, as you can see, 26 days, yes, we have 26 more days before Giving Tuesday is live. But here at Give Butter, we have become the all to go to resource for you guys. So we have things like our amazing Giving Tuesday playbook, where we have all the details, all the resources that you could ever imagine, um, everything from how to create a campaign to how to get, um, how to engage on a deeper level with your donors, how to create a live uh, streaming video, or how to even write engaging emails. All of those things and so much more can be found at our um, on our playbook. We also have amazing success stories that we're going to have featured for you guys um, on the Giving Tuesday website. So as you can see on our website, there are so many different things that you can go in. You can actually click and see other different um, success stories from other campaigns across the um, uh, that have happened on GiveButter in years past. Um, and you can see how they've been able to reach success and, of course, how you guys can reach success for your campaign this year as well. And then, of course, if you guys haven't heard the news, and I'm sure many of you guys have, we are giving away $50,000 this year for Giving Tuesday. Okay, if you want to win a piece of that pie, say, I want to win in the comments, okay? I want to say, I want to win. I wonder what would you would do with $50,000? What would you do with a piece of that pie? Well, we are giving everyone an opportunity to win some money this year uh, for, and we're going to be donating some money this year to campaigns across the Give Butter community. Um, and all you have to do is go to our website. We have a special link for you to be able to apply. Um, and you just hit that application button. Make sure you apply before November 23rd. And I want to make sure that I point out to you guys, you don't have to have your campaign be completed by the time that you submit, okay? I've seen a lot of people ask, does it have to be perfect? The answer is absolutely not. Just make sure you get it in so you can win, okay? But without further ado, I want to make sure that we get to the meat of this conversation today. I know you guys can just go to our website to check out some more details, but I want to get to what today's session is all about. And we are going to be featuring three amazing campaigns today, and we're going to talk to them. We're going to see their campaigns in action, and then we're going to give them some specific feedback tips um, and opportunities for them to continue to grow their campaign ahead of Giving Tuesday. And our hope and intention is that you'll be able to walk away with some amazing notes as well. Does that sound good? Are you guys ready? Well, we have three amazing organizations, as I mentioned, and I want to go ahead and get started with our first workshop campaign. And that we are going to be going through some uh, the Giving Tuesday scanning project from an amazing, amazing museum. So let's just jump right in. So this amazing organization, they had the unique problem of they're an upstart organization, but they've been around for nearly 50 years, okay? They've been around for nearly 50 years. They have been doing amazing work. They've been archiving the details from their community for over 50 years, but they need to take their development operation to the next level. And their main goal is they want to be able to purchase a scanner um, that has the capabilities to digitize even more um, photographics, uh, photography. I'm sorry, photographic negatives, and I'm sure Jessica will share it a little bit better, um, but they're using GiveButter to be able to do that. And so I actually want to not butcher this anymore. I'm going to bring Jessica up to the table to share a little bit more about her organization and how they're changing the game in their community. Welcome, Jessica. How, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm so happy to have you here, and I'm so excited for the GiveButter community to hear more about your organization. So would you mind just sharing a little bit more about the mission and vision of the museum? Sure. Um, we are a really small nonprofit. Um, we're in the town called Mattapoiset, which is actually Wampanoag for a place of rest. Um, our mission is basically to uh, collect and maintain significant artifacts from Mattapoiset's history and heritage. Um, like you said, we've been um, a nonprofit since 1958, um, but we haven't always had um, a digital presence. 
Um, I came on last year and um, as a board member and volunteer and tried to get the organization into the 21st century. Um, we primarily have only done, um, you know, donations through mail. Um, so give butter is something totally new to the organization. Um, digital fundraising is something that's totally new as well. Um, and our vision is basically, we want to inform the present and we want people to be able to have access to historical records and documentation from the town's past. Um, and we want to ensure that um, we want to ensure all those items are preserved for longevity. I love that. Tell me a little bit more about the fundraising ups and downs. So I know that you said that you've been using, you know, before in the past, you've had to kind of use, you know, direct mail services. Tell me a little bit more about the fundraising for your organization. Um, so I was actually able to get our numbers. Um, and last year for the entire year, we only raised um, $21,000 which is actually really good for us considering we serve a population of only 7,000 people in our town. Um, so we do have donors, um, you know, who used to reside in Mattapoisett that, you know, still donate. We have people from all over the world that have a connection to our town in some shape or form that continue to donate. Um, but our donor base is 65 plus. And unfortunately, a lot of those people are starting to pass away. And so we really need to get the, um, the younger generation to start being involved with the museum and feel that it's something that they wanna to contribute to. I love that. I'm not sure. Um, I know that I can relate from past experiences, but I'm sure there are many other people on this call who can also relate to trying to modernize and update their donor base. And if that's you in the in the chat, definitely let us know. And I believe that this will be a campaign that you guys want to hear a little bit more about. So with no further ado, let's just jump to your Giving Tuesday campaign and hear more about the things that you're trying to do. Sure. Um... So our Giving Tuesday campaign is um, we're trying to raise funds to um, buy a scanner. Um, like I said before, we, we're a really small organization. Um, we haven't always had professional archivists working with our collection. Um, so in pulling materials for an exhibit that we did for Halloween, we were looking for creepy dolls, uh, which was really successful. But um, we ended up finding a box of negatives that are um, four by five. That's a picture of the museum when it was a church slash meeting house. Um, and we found this box of negatives. Um, and in further investigation, we realized that they're starting to deteriorate. Um, this, this certain type of negative uh, puts off a very strong vinegar smell. Um, and when we opened up the box, it was overwhelming. Um, this picture right here is uh, something, uh, oops. Um, so going back to the negatives, um, it offsets a very strong vinegar smell. Um, and so the negatives are already deteriorating and there's about 200 of them um, that need to be scanned. Uh, and unfortunately these negatives are also highly flammable. So as soon as they are digitized, they will have to be properly disposed of um, but these images are in threat of, you know, becoming unviewable. Um, so after talking with the director and another board member, we decided that that was a good start off point um, for a Giving Tuesday campaign, considering that we've never done one before. Um, so this image right here, I especially love because it's of um, the town barber, Abraham Skidmore. Um, he was the son of previously enslaved people, um, and he moved to Mattapoisett from Virginia in the late 1800s, and he ran a successful barbershop in town for over 50 years. Um, and we don't have many images of Abraham Skidmore, and my husband actually found this one when we were going through the negatives, and we were so pleased to see that we had a picture of him. Um, so this is why it's so important for the museum. It's important to the community to be able to have access to these images. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jessica. Yeah, no you know, problem. one thing that I realized when you were sharing and the thing that I kind of noticed about a lot of the Give Butter community is that the story is so important. Like, 
hearing that story of that amazing barber and, and his legacy to your community, people are going to want to rally around that and they're going to want to support that. And yes. so I think that's one thing that I definitely want to, you know, communicate to your community. So let's just jump right into um, a little bit more about some of the suggestions that we have for this campaign. Sure. So one of the things that I noticed um, was that in your um, in your donation box and in the actual donation form, you didn't connect any of the amounts to specific um, you know direct services. And I think that that's something that I've seen be so incredibly important across successful campaigns is connecting the amount with direct services so that people can actually contextualize what mm -hmm. their impact is. And so I we have another example of a campaign that kind of does have that on this next slide. Um, but even if you're thinking like, okay, you know, hey, maybe $50 is going to help, you know, in the long run to, you know, digitize, you know, 10 copies of an image and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, making it in a way that's digestible for people to be able to understand is going to go a long, long, long way. Um, and another thing that I would recommend is actually trying to set some time bound constraints to your campaign, which mm -hmm. I kind of point out in the next slide. So one of the things that I noticed with reading your story, which I absolutely loved, but you were saying, you know, let's help us raise this amount before it's too late. And one thing that I've noticed, you know, across a few different campaigns, not just with you, but with other campaigns in the community is that we kind of set arbitrary, you know, goals or, you know, kind of cloudy different goals and boundary lines. And people like to know, okay, hey, I actually need to help them raise this goal by midnight tonight or else they're not going to be able to purchase the thing that they need to purchase. Or I want to help them do X, Y, Z thing by, you know, a certain amount, a certain time. That's going to help get people energized and excited because they want you to win. One yeah. thing that I want you to realize and everybody who's watching this is that your donors want you to win or else they wouldn't be your donors. They wouldn't be in your community, you know? So mm -hmm. giving them that time bound constraint, I believe is going to really help in the long run. And then the next thing that I want to talk about, and I want to stay here for a little bit, is I actually think that this is an awesome opportunity for you all to enable peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Now, I've talked to a lot of people in the Give Better community, and some people are like, we're so excited about it. Some people are like, we're absolutely terrified about it. How do you feel about peer-to-peer about -peer fundraising, Jessica? No, I want to do it. <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's absolutely. just getting It's just getting those people behind you know, to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. And one thing that I've started to realize is that everybody has a circle. So a lot of times people are thinking, okay, where do I start? If I can't start with my board, who do I start with? We don't have a bunch of volunteers. Who do we start with? And my response to you is, who is in your circle? You know, who do you know? Who are your friends? Who are your family members? Because we all have to start somewhere. And I can guarantee that you know 10 people off the top of your head who can give you $10, you know? And even if those people who are starting off and giving you those original donations, even if they have no connection to your cause, they have a connection to you. And majority of people give when someone asks them to give. Not necessarily because they know about the campaign or because they know about the cause, but they know you. And because of you, you're going to be the conduit to communicate the message of your organization. People are going to now know, hey, you know, if this is important to Jessica and Jessica is important to me, maybe this cause will be important to me. And now you're opening up the doorway for more people to come into your community and ultimately support your cause. And that's what you want. And yes. I really think that you guys enabling and starting peer to peer, especially because your goal is only two thousand um, dollars, will be a really, really good way for people to to jumpstart and get going. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. I love that. I love that. So um, I feel like this is going to be a really, really great thing for you to kind of get going and and be able to jumpstart. And so, do you feel like you have a good place to kind of get started? Yeah, I do. Um, Absolutely. I, everything that you brought up is something that I've been wanting to do. Um, it's, you know, adding the dollar amount to, you know, giving them a, a specific tangible thing that their money could contribute to is something I've wanted to do. It's something that um, I've always struggled with, actually, setting mm -hmm. up campaigns for the museum, because I'm like, what would $50 pay for? Right, you know? right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't know, five reams of paper. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I've struggled with. So I think, you know, going forward, I think I'll definitely put more time and energy into coming up with tangible things that the dollar amounts might help with. 
I love that so much. And we're going to get to Q&A a little bit later, but somebody in the in the chat, I think it's George who mentioned this, which is a really, really great point. Sometimes it's easy to get your friends to give, but getting your friends of your to get their friends to give is where things can be challenging, which makes so much sense. And one of the things that my colleague um, Kate is going to talk about a little bit later is the idea of a fundraising toolkit. Or even if you don't have time to develop an entire toolkit, just putting together a few resources, like a social media post, like getting Getting one of the pictures on your actual campaign page with you have amazing pictures, getting that and putting a little small, you know, couple sentence paragraph and say, hey, can you share this with your community? Can you just put this post on Facebook? That's going to go a long way because you're making it so easy for others to support you as well. So again, remember that you're the conduit for change to take place for your community. Okay. And that's yes. going to take you a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. This was amazing. Okay, people, we got we got two more amazing organizations, and we're gonna we're gonna talk to you soon. Okay, Jessica. Okay. We have two more organizations that we're gonna run through. But guys, if this is helpful, please let me know in the chat that this is going, this is helpful, that you're gaining a lot of different insight. This is our first time ever doing anything like this, but we wanna do it for you. So if you have questions, if you have thoughts around, um, you know, that, you, that you're thinking about or things that are, are hanging you up, continue to put them in the Q&A, continue to put them in the chat, and we're gonna make sure that we're gonna talk to you because we are the Give Butter fam and we're gonna get there together, okay? Let me know, okay, in the chat, thank you. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead. We're going to bring up Kate. Um, we're going to bring up Kate and we're going to talk about the second organization for today. So our second organization, Lakeshore Pregnancy Center. Okay, Kate, do you want to go ahead and share the problem and solution statement? Absolutely. So the Lakeshore Pregnancy Center wants to launch a family support fund for the men, women, and families in their community who come to their center for immediate assistance, but don't necessarily have the financial resources uh, for those services. So this Giving Tuesday campaign supports their brand new joy fund, uh, the name of which I just love. So uh, let's go ahead and bring on Maria to talk a little bit more about Lakeshore Pregnancy Center's mission and vision. Maria, how are you? Oh, Maria, you're on mute. Okay, there we go. There we go. Good to <laughs> okay, hear from you, Maria. Friend. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I feel like I, I feel like we're on one of those like TLC shows where we like bring people <laughs> down and we're like, okay, tell us your whole life story and we're gonna get into <laughs> it. So anyway, I, I, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. But um, I'm super excited to have you. We love your organization. One of the things that Kate and I were talking about when we were selecting organizations for this is that we have people so on different ends of the spectrum, right? Lakeshore Pregnancy Center has been around for a long time as well. You have a little bit more of a de um, developed, you know, fundraising apparatus and fundraising operation. You've Use Give Butter for a long time, but I want to hear a little bit more from you. You know, tell us um, a little bit more about the mission and vision of your organization and where you guys are at in your fundraising journey. Yeah, so our mission really is uh, is very simple. It's to love people to life before, during, and after a pregnancy decision, and um, and our vision is to build a vibrant community where every life is valued, loved, protected and tr transform because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So basically all of our service are free. We operate four different centers in the West Michigan um, area. Um, we provide free pregnancy testing and free ultrasounds. We also provide, um, a, what is it called, Pre, uh, prenatal, uh, teachings and also you know after it's all, all all of our classes that we provide um we provide baby supplies like formula diapers clothes so yeah even um counseling to our um, our clients that walk through the door I love that. Tell us a little bit more about your fundraising journey up until this point. What's been going well and what are some of the hangups that you guys might be having? Um, I think one of the biggest thing is that we currently have two different names. So we used to be known as Lakeshore Pregnancy Center, and we are currently switching um, to Positive Options. 
Um, our positive options is our medical branch, but we are trying to kind of be known just as under positive options. Um, that is our biggest, um, I think, stumbling block right now. We're, we're dealing with it, but <laughs> so um, we've been around since 1991. And like I said, we have four different centers. Uh, so one is the problem is the brand recognition. And I think the other one is always, I think, uh, um, acquiring new donors. Absolutely. Absolutely. Since, uh, Jessica said it before, you know, a lot of our donors are in the older group of people and getting new donors to kind of um, align with our with our values and our mission and our vision. That's where we try and really um, fundraise on on social media and uh, online because that's where that's where they are at. Absolutely. Well, um, if that's okay, if it's okay with you, Kate, let's just jump right into this Giving Tuesday campaign so people can see what they're working on this year. Yeah, so um, our campaign, so since we provide uh, free uh, pregnancy testing and uh, free um, ultrasounds and we have classes, what we do, we wanted to actually provide this, which is called like, it's, a, it's an emergency fund. Most of our clients that walk through the door are in crisis mode, but not only because of an unplanned pregnancy, a lot of times they are facing with, um, you know, they have rents that they have to pay. Um, maybe their, their gas bill needs to be paid, their um, um, electric bill, or just simply putting gas in their car. So, and that's why we've named it the Joy Fund, because this kind of will put, hopefully, will put people in a better spot um, just to be able to pay those emergency um, bills that come up and just kind of, you know, so they can relax. A lot of times when, when, when you sign up for these um, um, uh, side companies that will um, help, they're not always, you know, instant. So we, we want to have that in our fund that we can provide a gas card for for our clients if they want to come and have a, um, an ultrasound or take a pregnancy test. On our, on our page, we have also kind of just listed all the different things that we provide that are free, which is basically, you know, the, the, the medical. Um, uh, let me see, I'm going medical, the family support with classes, educational services that we kind of provide in our schools. We also provide um, fatherhood services, just how to become a good father, how to support, you know, when the, 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 the girlfriend, the wife, the, um, when they're pregnant. And also we help churches um, talk about abortion, talk about, uh, you know, an unplanned pregnancy. So... Yeah. Wonderful. I love this campaign. I love how engaging it is. Um, and we really saw like, you know, you guys are doing an amazing job with the storytelling component of this of this campaign. So let's just jump right into a few things that we noticed um, and that we hope will help you and some of the other viewers that are watching. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, one of the things that we we recommended and we noticed is that you have amazing pictures and you have amazing feedback about what the picture uh, about what your services are but we also thought that maybe adding video could be helpful so on average we've seen that campaigns that add video receive about 114 percent more funding overall i looked at your website i know that you guys have a lot of great um resources there as well like you have a lot of good videos and whatnot so try incorporating some of those videos into your campaign and we think that that can actually go a long way. Another thing that you talked about was wanting to engage younger donor demographics. And so one of the things that you also mentioned is that you're on social media and you're using Facebook and you're using email. So one of the things I was going to point out to you as well as everybody else watching is that we do have really engaging social sharing features on the page. Um, but another thing that you were just talking about was the idea of having brand recognition and making sure that you're bringing everyone together under one brand. Well, the benefit of using some of the social sharing options on GiveButter is that you can actually control the message, you know? So when they go ahead and share that page, sure, the 
donors or the people who are your supporters can share that campaign to their Facebook newsfeed or their LinkedIn newsfeed and whatnot. But you can actually tell them what to say. If you craft your own hashtag or maybe you're crafting your own messaging that you want people to be able to share, you can actually do that. And now you can start bringing and mobilizing people together under one brand, under one roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think that that's going to go a long way for you all. Another thing that we wanted to recommend was try something new. So if you have um, a lot of, you know, people within your within your community, especially if you're having a lot of older demographics and whatnot, potentially you're asking them, okay, hey, we're starting a joy fund. What's one thing that brings you joy? Maybe you're talking to your donors or you're talking to your volunteers and you're saying, hey, what's one thing that brings you joy? Maybe they say it's volunteering with your with one of your centers. They can talk about that and kind of start getting the conversation going on social. People are going to see it more eyeballs are going to come on board uh, and they're going to um, ultimately bring in more people and more demo donor demographics to your community. What are some other thoughts that we had, Kate? Yeah. So one of the things that I thought was so neat about this campaign was as you go through those graphics and really share about what you do, it's clear how many different people in the community you are touching. And one group that really stood out to me, Maria, was the churches. Um, you know, you are providing them with resources, and that can also be a great place to acquire new donors for your cause, um, especially because churches don't generally participate in Giving Tuesday. This can be a great opportunity for the churches in your community to help support the center. Um, so I had two ideas for you on this. One is scan to give scan to give is a QR code. A QR code is automatically generated for every give better campaign. Uh, if you are tuning into this call, that's located in the sharing tab of your campaign and your dashboard. And I think after this past year with the pandemic, everybody is very used to using that scan to give QR code. Um, so they will be easily able to take out their cell phone and scan that QR code. That would be wonderful to put in church bulletins or um, in mailers and can be a great way to transition from people hearing about what you're fundraising for to actually making that donation on their cell phone. Uh, you can also, in addition to scan to give use our text to donate functionality. So text to donate is also available in the sharing tab of your dashboard. That looks like setting a custom short code that your potential donors can text to our phone number in order to get your giving link back. And if any churches agree to take up a special offering for positive options, um, that, again, can be a really great way to go from hearing about the cause to actually making that gift in real time. Uh, the next piece, and thank you, Nate, for bringing us to this slide, is starting to use Engage. And Engage is Give Butter's internal marketing software. You can actually send emails from within Give Butter to all of your contacts, and those will come directly from your email domain as well. So whether that's, uh, you know, lpcenters.com or uh, if you're transitioning to positiveoptions.org, you can connect to that domain and send emails from there. We track conversions for you. You can link directly to your campaign. And we know that all donors are going to have lots of options this Giving Tuesday. So we definitely encourage you to start that outreach early, communicate with people before Giving Tuesday about the campaign that you have coming up, then communicate with them during and after the campaign as well to follow up and let them know how you ultimately did. Any thoughts about any of that, Maria? Yeah, yeah they're all, all really, really good, good suggestions. suggestions. Yeah. yeah, I love, I love the, the engaged engaged part. part. Absolutely. Um, we would love to help you set that up so we can set up another call uh, to do that with you. But for awesome. anyone else tuning in, Engage is available by waitlist in your Give Better dashboard. Uh, go ahead and sign up for that waitlist. Usually it takes about 40 hours to get reviewed for that. 
um, and then have access to sending those emails directly from your GiveButter dashboard. All right, thank you so much, Maria. We will come back to you in just a moment. Um, but now I would like to transition to our third workshop for the Family Heritage Foundation. They are aiming to expand their after school program, but they need funds to help them do so. Um, and currently they have a Giving Tuesday campaign to expand their programming to over 270 students. So let's bring on Bennett to chat with us about their mission and vision. Hi, Bennett. Can you tell us a little bit about Family Heritage Foundation and your mission and vision? Uh, Family Heritage Foundation uh, was founded uh, 20 years ago uh, to build a safer family and safer community with the message of hope. I love that. And how is your fundraising going right now, Bennett? What are your pain points? Um, it, 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 it's a try by error, but this uh, give board are really giving, uh, giving us um, a way out because there's so many things that uh, we do with give board that uh, I haven't been able to done, uh, to do, uh, rather, excuse me. But, uh, so far, it has been going well. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad to hear it. Let's take a look at your Giving Tuesday campaign page together. And as Nate scrolls through that, if you could share a little bit about the campaign itself, what are you fundraising for and how are you going about it? Um, right, right now, we, we, we've been using a different apartment complexes to, to, do a, to host our after school program for the past uh, 20 years, uh, they've been good to us. Um, now we're trying to get a building so that we can put everything, uh, after school program, uh, family uh, literacy, um, and put everything under one roof instead of jumping from one place to another. So that is a kid sitting in an, uh, the library, the local library uh, that we use their space and uh, keep on doing what God called us to do. Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. So we've got a few suggestions for you for your campaign to enhance yeah. that. Um, and the first one is to use our new campaign update feature. So this is located at the top of the supporter feed on your campaign page. And this allows you to post updates during your campaign um, about how it's going, you can pin those to the supporter feed or allow them to organically trickle down, as well okay. as send those out through Engage to your donors. And that's a great way to highlight as you hit milestones towards your goal. Uh, okay. You know, maybe you hit that first 15,000 or you actually hit your match goal. Those are really great opportunities to build momentum, let people know that you need that little extra bit in order to reach the goal um, and, you know, share any positive stories that come yeah. up during Giving Tuesday as well. Yeah. Um, we also, in that campaign update functionality, have a very cool Canva integration. Canva is a free online graphic editor, and it's a great opportunity to post graphics um, and make that mm. really engaging as well. Canva can also be used to add imagery to your campaign. So you have a beautiful story section right now that really shares you know, what you're doing and what you're doing for these folks in your community. But we find that adding some more pictures can be a really engaging way to okay. get people to, uh, you know, have their heart moved for your cause. And, okay. you know, Bennett, I know you and I spoke a few weeks ago about some of the incredible success stories that your organization has. These students yep. who have started with you guys and gone on to become doctors and work for the UN. And yep. 
those are just such incredible stories that are going to get people excited to give and give towards the after school program. So yeah. sharing those successes um, and with you know, pictures of those students could be really powerful in your story section. Okay. Um, that also brings me to our next point, which is taking your team fundraising to the next level. So you've got team members signed up on your campaign to do that peer to peer. That's so awesome. Yeah. One of the really great ways that you can enhance that peer to peer fundraising is reaching out to specific individuals. You know, what about those folks who have gone on to become doctors, but started with you guys or, you know, your student who's working at the UN, would they be willing to be a peer to peer fundraiser for you and not only reach out to their network, but people in your community will recognize them and want yeah. to give and credit them as well. Yes. On every team member page, team members can uh, fill out their own story section and also upload pictures, videos, and graphics as well. So that'll mm -hmm. help with adding more of that imagery to your campaign page. Um, and for those, you know, previous students, you want them to self-record a short video talking about their experience with your organization. And they can post that right there on their story and then share that out via social media as well. Yeah. Um, one of the ways to get people to participate in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that can be really successful is providing them with a toolkit like Floyd mentioned earlier. So that might look like one, very clear instructions about when and how you want them to join the campaign, when and how you'd like them to be sharing the Giving Tuesday campaign with their networks, um, maybe some sample uh, Giving Tuesday social media posts so that they can copy and paste that. And then yeah. just take some of the legwork out of figuring out how to share. Okay. And we really believe that ultimately those successful peer-to-peer -peer campaigns are gonna lead to our final suggestion, which is securing those new donors. So if you are having uh, folks in your community peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for you, we know that that's gonna bring in folks who have never heard of your organization before, who are giving for the first time, which is absolutely what we want. Um, and my advice would be to really make sure that you follow up with these new donors after the fact. Okay. All donors who give through GiveButter will automatically receive a receipt email that includes a custom thank you message from you. That can be configured in the settings tab of your campaign. Um, but those donors are also automatically added to your contact list within GiveButter so that you can communicate with them in the future as well. And I think sending a follow-up email to all of those new donors, especially thanking them for their new gift um, and letting them know how your Giving Tuesday fundraising went. You know, everybody wants to be part of your success at that point. So letting them know, uh, you know, how it went, thanking them again, and that way they're, you know, being thanked before they're asked to give again as well. Yeah. Any thoughts or questions, Bennett? Yeah, what we what I've been doing um, is I have a a sample of how to join it, how to join the fundraise. I have that in an email that I send to whoever I talk to and I speak a lot in churches. Mm -hmm. So I take that with me and give them so that they can go from point A to point B to point C. Uh, just follow a little cheat sheet so that they, oh, can, I love that they can follow and set it up. So a lot of uh, people, a lot of people that I met uh, last week that I spoke, I'm still following up on them to set up the uh, uh, portal so that they can start raising funds for us. Because see, the people that they know, I don't have an idea, but they mm -hmm. know them, they have a relationship with them. That's why okay. this thing is so good um, in doing that. So oh, I, I also, awesome. I, I put a challenge to our board 
that they need to reach out to their own people. So it's a challenge going on now um, that uh, we see what happened, what God will do. Absolutely. I cannot yes. wait to see what happens with your board member fundraising as well. Oh, well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we can all relate to sometimes your, your board uh, can be your best or your worst fundraisers. Oh, so I, really, I cannot wait to see your success there. I, I'm really using uh, our former students. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. using them to get the word out and to get their network. Uh, awesome. donate because they have benefited from the program mm -hmm. and um, that's what we do we trying so hard to get that reward out to them awesome yeah oh that's so inspiring i love to hear it bennett i love it see you you're not new to this you're true to this okay you got oh you man got two decades talking to the people <laughs> building relationships i love to yeah. hear it also, yeah. I know a lot of people have questions about mobilizing their board, mobilizing their fundraisers and their resources, um, but it seems like you've done a really good job. So we have a few more minutes left. I want to bring back all of the amazing panelists if we can. We have a lot of questions. We have like 15 plus questions waiting for us in the Q&A, and I see also some in the chat. So let's just, let's try to get to a few of these. So I'm going to send this first question to Maria, okay? So um, somebody, um, De Devian asked, once you enable peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, what are some ways to motivate them to share continuously, to continuously share your campaign? And I'm going to bring it to you because I know you guys have done a few successful peer-to-peer -peer campaigns on GiveButter. So do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think really is trying to get the word out as much as you can. And the way we do that is actually today we posted our first uh, social media post on Facebook and on Instagram saying, hello, we're going to participate on Giving Tuesday, you know, telling them the dates and what it's about, introducing them to the Joy Fund. Um, we previously, it's funny that Kate mentioned this before, but actually we did make a card with your QR code <laughs> that we handed out in an open house. Last Perfect. Week. <laughs> so... Yeah. So that's what we're doing. I don't know if that helps, but it's so amazing. I love blasts. that. I lo Sorry, that's the other thing. We're sending email blasts the week before to all of our donor database. Um, again, just kind of like just to keep it up there, keep it, uh, keep them aware that this is going on. And yeah, I love that. Kate, Haley asked a really important question that I think would be good for everyone. So is there an easy way within GiveButter to note or tag first-time donors? Are there indicators? Can we filter, segment them in any way to further improve communication with this specific group? That's a great question. Absolutely. So in GiveButter, in your contacts list, you can always filter and sort by donation date as well as tag. So if you'd like to filter by folks who have given, you know, within a certain time, maybe that's just during Giving Tuesday or just within 2021, you can absolutely uh, filter for those properties, save it as a segment, and also then tag those particular donors as, a, you know, a new donor or a Giving Tuesday donor so that you can follow up with them in appropriate ways. I love that. Jessica asked, toolkits have been mentioned a couple times. Could you provide a template toolkit, something that jives well with GiveButter? Any resources like this would be hugely helpful. So Jessica, we have been talking about this internally for a long time about designing some kind of universal template and a lot of organizations are asking about it. So I'm gonna work with the marketing team to make sure that we get something that we can send out for you um, and everybody on this call um, and just our general community as well, okay? Um, we have another question that says, oh man, okay, we have a few. Let me try to see. Hmm. Okay, so one method we've used is to create a competition of sorts that offer peer-to-peer -peer prizes. Would you recommend that being a good idea? Um, you know, I'm going to ask this one to Bennett. Bennett, have you ever used any type of competition or fun way to engage your community? Uh, I use that with our board. 
Mm. Just, just to kick them in, uh, in, in the belly a little bit, uh, to, to go ahead and give. I get to a point of uh, challenging them to give, and the reward is uh, maybe a night in a, a, a nice restaurant of their choice, uh, stuff like that. Because it, it, the more they raise, that's the same money that I'm going to take a little bit of that and pay for their dinner. So it that. always work out for it always work out for me that way. I love that. And then I'll ask this last question um, to you, Jessica. What are some ways that you've incentivized your donors before in the past? Where we've incentivized our donors? Yes, if you have at all. Well, we have um, in some time, in some instances, we've offered uh, free memberships to the museum. Um, so if you know, somebody donates money, uh, you know, we'll put their name in a, you know, a fake hat and then, you know, pull a name and do a, um, a free individual membership. So. I love that. And that's great because you're tying it all the way back to your cause and campaign as well. So that's amazing. And I, I love to hear that. Um, well, I just want to give you guys a round of applause. I want to say thank you. Come and show these guys some love in the chat as well. Let them know that you're grateful to hear them. It takes a lot of guts to come up here and uh, share your campaign live before it even goes live to the general public. So we want to say thank you guys. We really, really appreciate you all. So thank you guys again. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So before we close everything out today, I want to go to a few important Giving Tuesday reminders. So, well, we have a few, a few Giving Tuesday tips that I want to share with you guys. So we have a few more minutes, so let's just run through these really quickly. <clears throat> so one is make sure you set tangible goals, okay? We've seen through everybody today that having tangible, specific goals go a long way for your donors. Of course, they can see, you know, directly how much their money is helping you reach that goal and reach that impact. So make sure you set those tangible goals for your donors to be able to help you reach, okay? Two, bring your community together, okay? Peer-to-peer -peer campaigns are such a great way to bring your community together. Um, but as you've seen from other of our panelists today, you don't need to just do peer-to-peer. -peer. You can use our QR code. You can use our text messaging services. You can use all the other different features to really bring your community into what you're doing. Remember, no man is an island. And Giving Tuesday is not the day for you to try to say, I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to do this on my own. No. Come together, bring other people into your community, and help them help you reach your ultimate goals. Three is be genuine and display impact. One of the things I loved, especially with um, with Bennett, is that he really knows his donors. When we were talking on the phone before, he said, I know my donors' anniversary days. I know, um, I know their birthdays. I know a lot about my donors because he's getting in the middle. He's working with the donors. He said one thing that I love. He said, your donors are not a piggy bank. And that is so incredibly true. They're not a piggy bank. They are people. So make sure you're genuine and, and get to know them. But then also display the impact of your organization. Share pictures. Share videos. Share all the things that we want to know what is going on with that campaign. And then lastly, just start. One of the things I want to, you know, shout Jessica out on is, you know, when we were, we, when her and I were speaking, she said, you know, we're brand new to this. And I know a lot of people on this call are brand new as well. Don't worry. Just get started. Get in the game and just say, hey, we're going to go ahead and just take a chance and, and make things happen. And the reason why is because Giving Tuesday is one of the biggest days in the country and in the world for giving. There's billions of dollars that are being donated to causes. Some of the, a lot of the time, it's people getting brand new donors for the first time. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Just get started. And then, of course, I want to close up with a few important Giving Tuesday reminders, okay? So first is submit your Giving Tuesday campaign. I mentioned this at the beginning of the session, but I want to just mention, I mentioned it again. We are donating over $50,000 to campaigns across the Give Butter community. So make sure you submit your Giving Tuesday campaign before November 23rd. Remember, it does not have to be perfect before you submit it. Just get it in so that you have the chance to win, okay? Next is get ready for our upcoming webinar. So 
when we first started this Giving Tuesday series, we wanted to make sure that we were able to touch and reach organizations at different points in their Giving Tuesday cycle. So our next session is going to be all about the follow up. OK, we are going to help you figure out what is your follow up strategy. Don't just say thank you. Thank you is where, the be where, where it all begins. OK, how are you using Giving Tuesday to launch a grander and greater end of year campaign? We're going to chat all about that um, in our next session. And then lastly, we've been talking about it. You've been hearing about it. Grace has been putting the comment, uh, putting it in the in the chat. But we have the most amazing Giving Tuesday playbook. Okay, so many questions that I see here in the chat, we answer and we answer in depth in that playbook. So make sure you go and you check it out. Okay. Lastly, I just want to say thank you. You don't know how grateful we are that we get to talk to you guys and communicate with you guys. We do what we do for you. We literally come and we live and we breathe to see you got you change makers continue to make that change in your communities and ultimately in our world. So thank you so much for coming. Get ready for gearing up for Giving Tuesday and Beyond taking place on November 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And until then, I will see you all soon. Make sure you let us know if you enjoyed this, this, um, this session in the chat. Um, and with no further ado, I just want to say thank you guys again. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank y'all. You turned this from an idea in a dorm room into the number one rated fundraising platform on the internet. You raised over $100 million for charitable causes just in the last year. You are making the world a better place, one gift at a time.